Hello, gentlemen. In class, we looked at the nature of science by looking at inquiry cubes. You work together as teams to solve a problem, you know, in collaboration with your group members. At the foundation of this activity was scientific thinking. You had to systematically go through a series of steps to solve a, a problem for you guys. Now, this happens all the time in science. This is actually the foundation of science is thinking. Now, scientists always solve problems using a systematic, you know, procedure, you can call it. We usually call it the scientific method. Now, the scientific method isn't a cookie cutter model for, you know, every scientist throughout the world. Every scientist has their own way of completing a scientific method to solve a certain problem. I'm going to give you a general layout of one, one method that we could use. There are different steps in this method. The first step is to state the problem. So, in, to begin many investigations in the scientific world, we make observations and we begin to wonder, you know, the events in nature. You know, why something occurs or how something occurs. That's called stating the problem. Second is look, making observations. We use our senses to gather information in order to form what we call a hypothesis. Now, what is a hypothesis? It's a prediction based on information gained from our observations that we made. We made these observations with our senses, you know, sight, hearing, sense of smell, touch. After we form a hypothesis, we can do, well, most of us know, the experiment. This is testing your hypothesis through a systematic, organized procedure. And organized is underlined because it's important to be organized. And we'll talk about why in the next step, or the next slide, excuse me. After you complete your experiment, from your experiment, you analyze your data and results. This is interpreting and organizing information gained from the experiment in order to form a conclusion. And a conclusion, much like that of an essay paper, I guess, is a statement identifying that your hypothesis is supported or refuted by your data analysis. Just a statement. Now, if you do the same problem or the same experiment over and over and over and over again, and you get the same conclusion over and over and over again, then you can call this or you can form what is known as a theory. That is something that is proven because you've done the experiment over and over again, you've gotten the same results, you can call that a theory. Now, once your theory has been accepted throughout the world by many, many, many people and reaches a, the next level, it's called a scientific law. Scientific law is a statement about what happens in nature that seems to be true at all times. We have different scientific laws, some of, from you know, Sir Isaac Newton, for example. Many people have accepted his theories, now they are laws. Now, let's focus on experimentation for a minute. In an experiment, you're going to have to set some parameters in order to analyze your data sufficiently. To do that, we have something called variables. Variables are factors that can cause a change in the results of an experiment. We have three major types of variables. The first one is called your independent variable. It's a variable that the scientist chooses to change. Your dependent variable is a variable that changes due to a change in another variable. This is usually what you're measuring or what you're observing. And the third type of variable is a constant or a control variable. It's a factor that does not change even when other variables change. This is in place to make the experiment fair. Here's an example of a sample experiment, and we'll break down your variables as we do this. Now, here's an experiment measuring the velocity or the time in which it takes a cart to roll down a ramp. So I'm going to measure. Stop. Here we go. Now, I'm going to see how the velocity of this car is affected by the height of my incline. 
So with one book, I measure my time. Stop, there we go. Now I increase the height. I'm changing the height of the ramp. I measure again. Okay, I have a different time. It went faster. Now I increase the height of the ramp again. Start, finish. It went much faster, even the ramp moved. So in this experiment, I can outline some of my variables. My independent variable is what the scientist changed. I changed the height of the ramp. We went from one to three. My dependent variable is what I was measuring. I was measuring the time at which it took the cart to go down this ramp. So my dependent variable is the time that the car traveled down the ramp, or you could even say the speed of the car down the ramp. My control variables are what I didn't change throughout the experiment. Well, I used the same car throughout the experiment. I used the same stopwatch throughout the experiment. I used the same ramp, and I used the same books. If I were to do this experiment over and over and over again, I would have to use the same three books to do so. Also, the experimenter didn't change. I did all three trials. You know, my mom didn't come in here and do trial, trial two, and I took a break. That would make this a fair trial. So keeping all these things the same as I change my independent variable, that makes this experiment fair. Gentlemen, take notes on the nature of science. There will be a test.